um, in the early days, uh, who uh, was pretty much doing all the booking for the show, uh, for the shows, and uh, did you have a manager right away, or, or uh, no? In the early days, well, we just booked ourselves. It. Yeah, it sort of just take turns for me. You call up the club and say, no, I mean, you want to play." Kind of a case of filling up the local pub. That's a whole trial by fire. <laughs> yeah. And as a young musician, it's good. It's good for you to get on the phone and and try and jump into those things because it's it's quite difficult and it's a doggy dog world but it, it it helps you create a thick skin and realize what this industry is about we kind of always ended up doing pretty much the same one or two venues as well so like you get like one venue that was a good venue in london and the first show is usually the most important you've got to draw as many people you can in the first show because then they'll rebook you and then once you've you know proven that you can bring some people it's easier to get the gig for sure. I mean, I'm sure, like, we played um, the Double Door here, and I imagine that's a great local club. I mean, I loved it. I thought it was a really cool club. But I imagine it's like if you phone them and you're starting a band, you've you got to try and, you know, almost promise them that you're going to bring. Yeah. Well, they put you on Monday night people. Yeah, at 7 o'clock, and you've got to bring yeah, 100 people. You've got to bring 100 people, and mm -hmm. either that or you pay. It's like in London, you get that. It's like you basically got to pay to play. Really? Yeah. If you don't bring X amount of people, you end up literally paying. Uh, and you also have to, un have to understand, as a musician, you're going to suck in the beginning. It's just, your band's going to suck. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just how I'm, it is. Well, whatever. That's, <laughs> we might that's suck now. You, yeah. We might suck now, but we didn't suck in the beginning. That's just crazy. So it's a matter of growing, you know, and you're going to go through hilarious stages where you have a purple guitar and you paint your drums a funny color and you look like an idiot and, you know, it's just part of it. That's what sort of all the fun stories are. Yeah, yeah. About. exactly. And that, yeah, I think people shouldn't be worried about looking like an idiot or having a terrible gig. Yeah, no, just do it. Really. It's not really. It's better to it's do much, a yeah, than not do it. It's gig. much more important to play live instead of be in your basement and analyze what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. The amount of friends I've got who, who literally, I'm like, so, how's it going? You know, when you got a gig, and it's like, yeah, work on it. It's like 11 months. You know, like. Yeah, 11 you know, years. The material's not quite ready, you know, I want to do it. I'm like, man, you could have done 50 gigs. Yeah. And Two albums. worked out. Yeah, like, experience. Like, good or not. Because in, you know, in a lot of ways, that's your practice. Yeah, you right. You have to worry about practice play, you know, practice. Exactly. Printing a practice play. When we were on tour with the police and we had to play stadiums, I mean, how do you rehearse for that? You know what I mean? You just sort of get the idea that... You have to just do it. There's a lot of space and a lot of air and a lot of people, but... To actually go out and do it, it's not as daunting as you think. As far as you don't like get overwhelmed because there's so many people, you get overwhelmed because there's nobody like giving you a physical, you know, reaction to your music because they're so far away. Mm -hmm. So it's all about doing it. It's not about practicing. Okay. And uh, on to like the future. What can we uh, look forward to uh, in your future? Well, we've got the um, we got a great tour lined up after the Bravery Tour in Europe, where we're doing a lot of the really uh, great big festivals out there in uh, Germany, Holland, uh, France, which we're really looking forward to. Even the Canary Islands, actually. And then after that, we're doing the uh, 311 Snoop Dogg tour, which is bringing us back around here for six weeks. I think we do Chicago, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, <coughs> it's going to be a hoot. That's what we've got to be hot. For the <laughs> summer. Which is going to be great. I'm intrigued to see how that tour is. I think it could be really fun. Yeah, it's quite eclectic. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, uh, if you're going to Snoop Dogg and myself, uh, yeah. uh, so I'll be, you know, if you, you predict if you might be sharing stages and, you know, over the course of time, like... Yeah, no, it, it's nice to imagine that that might happen towards the end of the tour. We yeah. might let Snoop Dogg come and guest <laughs> on our set. Maybe. We might. It's... I don't know. I mean, a lot of, t a lot of the tours we've been on, it's like the last night something like that happens. And it's always a really nice thing to do. And it's good fun and it's like, it's just a good way of saying that was a good tour, see you later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now leave. Cool. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that'd be cool. I have no idea what 311 are like. And to be completely honest, being a Brit, I don't know whether this is all says, but I'd never heard of them. Oh. But, uh, I think I'd heard that they were big in America, but I've never actually heard the music. I don't think they did that much in England, whereas in the, in the US they're... <coughs> they're like staple food here, and in, yeah, yeah. in England it's like it's like grits or something. We've never <laughs> we never heard of like grits. grits. And Pete told us that, you know, told me that before. 311 is like grits. <laughs> <laughs> grits. 
It's very popular. It's down home. It's like, but it's just only in America. Yeah. So um, I have no idea what they like. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I've listened to some of the music since we know. I think we'll match it as well. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it's gonna be rad. It'll be fun. They bring diversity to reggae rock. Um, Pop, punk, rap. What are like final question here? What are um, some distant plans that you would like to accomplish either together or individually? Distant planets. Planets. Yeah. I'd like to conquer Alpha Saluto. Sure. Um, I'm not very far away, man. We definitely want to do another album. I mean, we're itching to do something different, but, like... You've got, like, what, I, I think at one point I read that you had at least 25 songs before the last album? Yeah, yeah I think there's even more. a little band with, like, 100 <laughs> songs in there that I... But that's a, no, a different band, yeah, sort of. I mean, we might revisit <coughs> some of those. But, you know, we just need, we need time away from touring, actually, to mm -hmm. just uh, get a little more headspace and then go back in and just concentrate on just writing and just playing a new stuff. But I'm looking forward to that. I think this album, the next album is going to be great. I really think so. I'd love to do a film school. Really? Yeah. I'd really love to do that one time in my life. Maybe more than one time, but I'd love to give it a shot. Particular genre of film or? Uh, Porn? <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's like an independent, independent star film would be really fun. I mean, I don't think I'd be really cut out for like a big Hollywood thing. Really Terminator 5! Yeah. Yes. No, I'd love to do like an art house film. I think that would be really interesting. Okay. I did my father's a fisherman, he just did a, a, uh, an instructional DVD. <laughs> Fishermaning DVD. <laughs> an instructional DVD for cast and how to fly fish and cast. And it's really beautifully shot by these directors in England. They sort of made it like, not arty, but like kind of very moody and, you know, it really had a, a tone set for it. And he asked me to do music and it's the first time I'd ever done it to a moving picture. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I definitely thought, oh, that'd be cool to do. I'd, ha I'd hate to be in the rap race of it though, because sure. I hear it's fiercely competitive and like, you know, even though Stuart Copeland was telling us about it, he used to do all the um, TV stuff and he said, no, it's just so fiercely competitive. Hmm. So, I like, it'd be cool if, you know, a friend was an actor in a film or someone that came up and said, I'd love you to do this and I'd be like, I'll do it for free, whatever, mm -hmm. that's cool, I'll just do it to try and do it. Um, I'd like someone to give me a billion dollars so I could go and get the last three Star Wars films remade. <laughs> and, put some Amen. and then erase the memory from erase everyone's Erase the memory, head. yeah, just zzz, and get some proper That'd acting cool. in them and good characters. We've got some issues with Lucas. Yeah, yeah we, we have problems. Yeah. We have fan problems. Of, fan of issues with Lucas. And I hear there's the, there's the Lucas Christmas edition that I've yet to assume. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, in the 70s. Then. That's from the, that's old school, though. Yeah, Very old school. You won't recover from seeing it's that. It's the, when the Wookiees <laughs> have, like, what is it called? Like Life Day. Life Day. Do they not do a, a modern day no, Christmas no. edition? No. Thank they, God. They love, they love, they love. It's on the internet. You can see it. It's quite <laughs> hilarious. Well, I want to thank you. And World Peace. I would have achieved World Peace <laughs> with the rest of the money. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, thank Jeff. you very much for Thanks, time. Dennis. Appreciate Have a great it. Great show tonight. Um, enjoy the game. Yeah, uh, go Cubs. Drink, drink up and uh, get <laughs> socks. <laughs> Boo. <-hoo. laughs> Perfect timing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.